Welcome everyone and thank you so much for clicking on this video. Today we're going to be taking a quick glance at Alibaba. I just wanted to give you a quick update video and today we're going to be doing this. We're going to take a little break from devaluing the every S&P 500 company. Now, today I want to talk about Alibaba for a couple of reasons. First of all, of course, we had the 618 uh, or the 618, however you want to call it, uh, shopping event, right? Which is, of course, a big thing in China. Now, I will be talking about that in a little bit. But before we do that, let's just take a quick look at what was going on with Alibaba. As we can see right here, uh, basically, Alibaba has been doing quite well. And all of a sudden, we're in a little bit of a weird situation. And I want to know if you are in the same situation. So please let me know in the comments below. Now, we started the year off at about $120. And right now, we're basically break even, right? We, we went all the way up, you know, back to that 120 but of course you know we have seen big dips around the road you know of course the 80 dollar mark you know especially a quite notable price i think uh but we even went as low as about 75 dollars a share so huge fluctuations in that price now the situation is right now if you just bought alibaba at the beginning of the year so at the first of january right or at the third in this case you would actually be outperforming the market by a large extent globally markets are down around 12 percent in the us about 18 percent i mean you know you are doing pretty pretty well but actually what i have been doing at least and please let me know if this is the case for you too is i have been buying along the way you know throughout these dips and a lot at these 80 marks right that right now my historical purchasing price for alibaba is actually 120 and so all of a sudden Alibaba is, you know, doing very, very well in the portfolio, you know, because yes, we're break even. Now, at the beginning of the year, we started off with a loss, but right now that loss is basically completely covered by continuing to buy the business at cheaper prices. Now, I think this shows us two things. One, if you really believe in the business, just keep buying it. Now, second of all, uh, of course, we should also bear in mind that Alibaba still looks very, very attractive at these prices. I will actually continue to buy even at these prices. Uh, but of course, also one thing that I want to say before we go into the news is that, of course, be careful, right? Alibaba can always go back to $70 a share. We do not know, but it is kind of a unique situation we are in at this point. Markets all going down, crashing down, and ironically enough, Alibaba is saving the day. <laughs> Now, I wanted to talk about the businesses in general, you know, the Chinese businesses in general, about the shopping event, Alibaba. Uh, but before we do that, I just want to give a couple of things that, you know, are going on right now. Of course, we see right now that globally, right, markets are in a little bit of hustle simply because the economy is not doing well. The economy is weak. Now, the economy is also weak in China, but a weak economy in China means 5% growth. It's a little bit of a different reality, but nonetheless, also in China, they can feel the impacts of the, you know, global economy, right? Now, I think what is very interesting to see, and this, I, I, I don't know what the stock price for Alibaba is going to do, but it, it is kind of an interesting theme because the economy might not be doing as well, right? The business might perform a little bit, well, let's say less great than expected simply due to the economy, right? Cyclical headwinds. But at the same time, the stock might perform quite well simply because it has been so cheap. Now, once again, this is wild speculation. I do not know this, so please don't take my word for it. But once again, we're kind of in a, a special situation at this point. Now, the title of this article is called Alibaba Pindodo, Lead Chinese Stock Gains Following 6 one eight shopping events. So without further ado, let's get into the news. So as we can see, internet stocks joined in a broad rally across the Wall Street Tuesday. This is, by the way, a little bit of an old article. So don't 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 worry about this stock jump. Uh, you know, whatever. It, it was not Tuesday. Of course, the last stock day was Friday at this point, uh, which was yesterday. Nonetheless, uh, this is a little bit of outdated news in that sense. Now, what we can see, though, is that the China consumer sentiment and the Chinese, Chinese internet stocks continue to do quite well quite well of course with you know a ton of volatility uh, don't get me started about that a ton of volatility uh, but, you know, they, 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 they tend to do quite well. Now, as we can see, over the weekend, China completed what is known as its 618 shopping season, which covers the first 18 days of the month of June. Hence, the 618 label 
is the country's l second largest consumer shopping e-day. And of course, next is Singles Day, right? The 11th of November. Uh, and so very interested to see. So this is always a, why is this so important? This is something you might ask yourself, like, why Why do we need to know this? Well, they say here, well, it's what the first, you know, event after the COVID-19 cases. That might be interesting and all. But these moments are important because they reflect the overall economy. All right. So these events give us an idea of how the overall economy is performing at this point. And that is, of course, quite interesting to know. Now, once again, it doesn't necessarily, sh you know, change my my way of viewing the business. Once again, I think Alibaba is an attractive buy. I have bought in the past at these prices. I will continue to do so. So, you know, that ch doesn't change much, but it's still interesting to see, you know, with this whole global economy, you know, cooling off quite rapidly. Right. What is going on with China there? And so. These these shopping events definitely give a, a good insight into that, I believe. Now, of course, you know, not uh, as much, you know, there was only so much detail made public. That is, of course, true, right? So some businesses talked about it. Some businesses don't. Now, let's go into the details straight away because I can understand that we are all very interested in that. So, of course, one of the companies that gave significant information about 618 uh, shills uh, is JD.com. Uh, you know, so JD, biggest e-commerce platform probably in China. Now, of course, don't get me wrong, Alibaba is the most market share. But of course, we have to bear in mind Alibaba is a group of things, right? Alibaba as such doesn't exist. You have different uh, e-commerce businesses within China. And so if you just compare, JD is a really dominant one among these players. Now, I think two or three or perhaps sometimes even one and two, it kind of depends, right? But the top three is Tmail, Taobao and JD.com. Now, Taobao and Timo are both owned by Alibaba. So that is basically something you have to bear in mind. Nonetheless, JD, of course, great. Now, I talked about this in my videos a lot. JD really focuses on the richer end of the consumer base. So you go to JD for that fast delivery uh, and for that big iPhone you want to buy, okay? Uh, whereas if you buy a little bit of cheaper products, you usually go to Alibaba. So that is basically it. Now, JD, as we can see right here, sold about $60 billion. 60 billion dollars okay 60 billion dollars in goods on his platform so that is really really a staggering amount if you think about it it is up 10 percent okay so 10 percent is quite of an interesting number it is definitely not bad once again uh you know an economy that is cooling off a little bit right for china that still means growth and that is something we might not be used to um, or at least that is kind of weird to see for you know westerners let me just put it that way uh, but of course you know 10 percent is not all that crazy for JD, right? So this this definitely suggests a slowdown in economic activity here, quite clearly. Last year, actually, as we can see, it was a 28% year-over-year increase. So that is a def definitely a very different play field you play at, right? I mean, 10%, 28%, wild difference there. Now, of course, over time, you do expect to, to see this slow down, simply because, you know, you already do, uh, you know, let's say 60 billion in, in, you know, just half a month, like, what more can you do, right? So, of course, that's going to slow down. But this, I would say, is not like organic slowdown. We see here a, a, a particularly big bump or a big decline in growth. And that probably has to do and reflects the overall economy, right? So this, again, suggests to me, okay, you know, worst times in terms of the economy might be ahead right and that is always something interesting to bear in mind now just one thing to clarify of course it doesn't or should not necessarily uh, influence your investment behavior but it is kind of interesting to know uh, and and so once again, you know, it, it shouldn't influence your investment behavior in the sense that you would just want to buy great businesses at great prices. Economic headwinds will come. Uh, economic tailwinds will come too. They come and go. That is simply the way it is. You need to look through that. But I think it is kind of interesting to see because if you if you put this on a stock market, and once again, wild speculation, it seems quite logical to me that probably the market, and especially with central banks, you know, you know, basically pulling money out of the, the money supply and pulling it out of the economy, right? Quantitative tightening that might come up, right? I mean, it seems quite logical to me that liquidity is going to kind of, you know, disappear slightly. And usually, uh, right now, I'm valuing every business in S&P 500. I would say, you know, a lot of them still have a ton of room to fall, you know, a lot of these businesses. So 
most likely that will happen. Once again, why is this important? Not necessarily to determine, oh, shall I buy this business? Yes or no. Oh, no. And I see this a lot nowadays. Be very careful with this. Oh, let's just not buy the business because economic headwinds are coming. Don't you see? The economy is not going to perform well. Who cares, right? The economy is so unpredictable. We simply do not know. If the oil price just shoots down right now, the war in, in Ukraine comes to an end, inflation all of a sudden, you know, miraculously start to go down a little bit, all of a sudden we're in a very different situation. So never make your bets based on the economy, but prepare yourself mentally for what is coming in the economy, right? I mean, I you cannot be sad if right now half of the, the stock market will just decline in value, right? Minus 50%. You cannot be sad. I mean... It is, well, likely, I don't know, but there is definitely a possibility that this will happen. Let me just put it that way. And so be prepared. That is something I really want to say. Now, back to the article. So Alibaba has not really disclosed anything about its 618 sales. Uh, analysts expect it to be much weaker than JD's. Uh, highly likely, simply because JD focuses on a richer segment in the society. If the economy is weakening, what's going to happen? Uh, you know, from the bottom up, right? We're going to cut costs, right? So the rich will not immediately stop stop buying, you know, the iPhones, right? That might come, let's say, in a couple of years when the effects go through the entire economy. But you know, someone that is struggling or might be a little bit, uh, you know, worried if if you know, in a couple of years, you'll still have a job and the savings are enough and all of that, you know, you live in a different world. And of course, you know, you want to stop spending uh, immediately. So that is just different, right? It depends on how, uh, yeah, for how long you can support yourself in terms of car costing, what are you going to do, how you're going to be reacting to economic conditions. So I would expect, you know, in an economy economic decline, you know, to see Alibaba uh, pull back earlier than JD in terms of business performance. Once again, uh, for the long term, that doesn't necessarily matter. But right now, it is important to bear in mind, I think. Uh, so don't expect 10% growth for Alibaba. That's simply, simply something I would say. And then Pindodor did also quite well. They didn't ex disclose that much, but they said that the sales of home appliances and cosmetics both doubled from a year ago. Probably the other categories did not do as well, right? I mean, uh, you know, if your entire sales doubled 100%, you probably would just straight out say it. Uh, so I think, you know, Pindodor on the whole did reasonably well, you know, probably, uh, you know, Pindodor style, perhaps, you know, 30, 40% growth. I'm not quite sure, right? Uh, but this is, you know, more aligned with the Pindodor growth at this point, I think. So that was all. That is just something I wanted to give you. So basically, to sum it up, the message of this video is we see also in the 618 event right now, economic headwinds are probably coming for these businesses, you know, uh, and so my real message is do not confuse that with investment okay uh, economics are fascinating interesting and you can help it right because if you know okay the economy is probably not going to do as well you expect probably a market decline now no one knew in march 2020 even though a lot of people like to say it that the bottom for COVID was there okay i mean it is always at the situation itself things look dreadful and all of a sudden the stock market rebounds and you know good news follows and you name it usually the stock market is a little bit before the economy in that sense and so i would say please do not confuse the two buy great businesses at great prices do that but at the same time prepare yourself mentally okay we are going into different times right now and this might cause or might not we don't know right it's all guesswork but might cause some economic damage. And so that will definitely, you know, bring valuations down in the overall market, which is a great opportunity for the long-term investor and a terribly scary thing for the short-term investor. Now, that was all. Thank you so much for watching. Please in the comments share your thoughts with me. I'm very interested to read about them. Once again, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.